So for number 15, we do have to um, sketch these two curves. Actually, three, three lines, right? Two curves in one line, and then we have to find the area between them. So let's put in our axis. And we'll begin with the first one, y is equal to e to the x. So at the point 0, and actually let me do this in a different color. So at the point 0, we have 1, because e to the 0 is just 1. And then it grows sort of like this. This will just be kind of, you know, a, a rough drawing. And now for the second function, y is equal to x times e of x. Let me just write this down, e to the x. Um, it, it is a bit tricky, but all we have to think about is that it's actually, it's this green line, e to the x, right, multiplied by x. Um, so at this point, at the point 0, e to the x times 0, we just have 0. Um, at the point 1, we just have e to the x, um, e to the x times 1, so we do have the same value. Um, at the point 2, we'll have e to the second, but then twice that, so it'll kind of go up. So on this side, we do have something that goes like this. It gets steeper and steeper because we're multiplying it by bigger and bigger values. Um, now on the left-hand side, we are multiplying by negative numbers, right? So it will kind of go like this. Um, so these are our two curves, that is y is equal to x times e of x, and then uh, we also do have to draw the line x is equal to 0. Um, so let me put this in a different color, put it in purple, and then it is this line over here. This is x is equal to 0. So we can see that the area bound uh, between these curves is this little section over here. Um, so we, we, can, we can see that the bounds of integration, it begins at x equals 0, and then it ends at x equals 1, which is where we saw that they intersect. Um, if you just wanted to test this out by yourself, analytically, you would just set these equal to each other. So we have x e to the x is equal to e to the x, right? And then we just factor it. I'll bring everything to the left-hand side. x e to the x um, minus 1 is equal to 0. Sorry, minus, it should have been minus e to the x. Uh, minus e to the x is equal to 0, and then we just factor it. Um, we have e to the x, then x minus 1 is equal to 0. So <clears throat> e to the x will never be... Uh, equal to zero. So the only way that this equation can be equal to zero is if this factor over here is equal to zero. And that factor is when x is equal to one. So we do have that our bound is that x is equal to one. So once we have found this, we can, um, we can set our integral up and then just proceed with it. So this is the integral from, um, this is the integral from zero to 1 of, what is the upper function? The upper function is the one that is in green. This is e to the x, then minus the blue function, minus x times e to the x, and all of this times, um, times dx. Now, how do we, how do we integrate it? Um, we do have to use integration uh, by parts with this. So we'll just kind of split it up and then do integration by parts. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x minus the integral from 0 to 1 of x e to the x, and that is dx. And I forgot my other dx over there. Okay. Um, so the integral of e to the x is just e to the x, right? So this is just e to the x. Uh, let me erase this stuff on the left so that we don't confuse it. So this is just e to the x from 0 to 1, and then minus. For this one, we're going to call um, our u is equal to x, and our dv is equal to e to the x dx. So then our du is equal to dx, and then our v is equal to e to the x. 
Um, and if you're ever confused in how you're going to make these choices, like which one is U and which one is DV, you just have to, you just have to, actually, let me put this in the formula. So this is integral of U DV is equals to UV minus the integral of V DU. Um, let me just make this a little prettier. V DU, right? So you have to think... Um, I, I am going to integrate V du. How can I make my integral simpler? And the term that we choose for u, when we take the derivative to get du, that should always give you something simpler because you're going to have to use du in your integral. If you had chosen um, something else, for example, if you had chosen, um, well, not in this case because this case is pretty simple, but sometimes... Uh, if your du gets more complicated as you take the, the derivative, you would not want to integrate that. Uh, similarly, when you your dv, when you integrate it, when you get e to the x, you should have an expression that is easy to integrate. Um, I like to use this acronym. Uh, that is the order that you should choose your u. So this is your, um, your logs and then your inverse trig inverse trig and then you have your polynomials so in the case this is our x right it's a polynomial and then you have your exponential functions and lastly your trig functions and we can see why the exponential and the trigs they're one of the last choices that we want for you because when we take the derivative we don't get something simpler we actually in many cases get something that's more complicated um, so with that being said Let's plug this into the formula. Um, so that is minus, and I'm just going to kind of put a parenthesis here so that we can we can set it up. So minus um, this is the uv, right? So this is just x e to the x times the minus the integral of v du. So that is e x du is just dx. Let me see if I did this right. uv minus the integral of v du. Yes, that is correct. And it is uh, e to the x. This is also from 0 to 1. It has the same boundaries. And this is also from 0 to 1. So um, let's write this down now in a clearer way. So this is just e to the x from 0 to 1, right? Um, and then this minus is going to be applied in both of these integrals, okay? So minus x e to the x from 0 to 1, and then minus minus, so plus the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x dx, right? So let's keep on doing this. Um, this is e to the x from 0 to 1 minus x e to the x from 0 to 1. And then when we integrate it, we also just get e to the x from 0 to 1. Um, so now we can just join these two. So this is just 2 e to the x from 0 to 1 minus x times e to the x from 0 to 1. And then we are ready to apply our boundaries. Um, so to apply our, our bounds, we'll just do... Um, we'll apply the upper bound. So when we put the lower bound, some of these terms will disappear. So for our upper bound, we have 2e to the 1, and then minus 2e to the 0. And then for our second term, we have minus, we'll just put 1, 1e e to the 1, and then minus minus, so plus, and then we multiply it by 0, so this will be, this will kind of disappear, right? So let's just clean this up. Um, so 2e to the 1 minus e to the 1 gives us e to the 1 minus 2e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1 because anything to the power of um, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So minus 2 and then plus e to the 0 times 0 is just 0. So to finish this off, we just have e minus 2. This is the result of our integral. So um, what I'm going to do is just kind of zoom out so that you can take a complete look at this this process and it's a little bit messy but i hope that you guys were able to understand um 
why how we took this integral that we just broke it up into two the first part we can just integrate it directly and then the second part we do have to use integration by parts choosing um u to be x and then dv to be equal to e to the x